copper, copper, copper. Copper prices, as mentioned in previous videos, has returned for the first time in a long time to prices over $4 per pound and is actually very likely going to uh, be breaking its previous price record soon. Its previous price record being way back in the early 2010s at just under $4.60 per pound. Recently, as of this recording, it had reached prices of $4.32. And that was one of my overall projections or forecasts for uh, this decade, the 2020s as a whole, was that uh, copper prices are likely going to uh, go up into the upper single digits, and uh, you're probably going to see prices between $6 and uh, $9 per pound sometime during this decade. But regardless, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. For anybody new, this is generally a podcast, so the screen is not going to change very often. If anybody wants to support me or help me out, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and in the top end comment. So, the uh, reasons for uh, this particular initial copper price increase, some of which uh, are long-term and are going to keep being factors, and some of which are only for this particular time range. These prices are futures prices, as are most commodities. Uh, so these are copper futures prices for copper purchases or copper deliveries in this coming spring in a couple months, which is when, for the Northern Hemisphere, uh, construction really starts going because a lot of construction halts during the winter and it all starts back up again in spring. So for the time period that these future prices are for, uh, copper demand is going to be jumping up because a lot of construction everywhere is going to be resuming. And irregardless of what's being built, whether houses, apartments, businesses, factories, anything, that's going to be creating a rapid, uh, enormous demand source for copper from a number of things. Obviously, electric wires are the, uh, the big one and the first one that come to mind. However, also don't forget about plumbing and pipes, as well as brass. Copper is the, uh, the main constituent metal for brass alloys, about 60% of it usually. Brass being what uh, doorknobs and door handles are made out of. Drawer handles usually. Plumbing fixtures like faucets and shower heads. Lamps and light fixtures. And then, also, uh, again, regardless of what it is that's being built, uh, those buildings, whether homes or businesses or commercial buildings, they're obviously going to uh, be filled with stuff, you know, devices, machines, and most devices have many copper parts to them, regardless of uh, their electric wiring within those devices as well, as those devices run on electricity. And so thus, they will have a bunch of copper wiring in them also. So since the copper prices on the market are futures prices for the springtime, they are reflecting what's going to happen in spring, which is uh, copper is going to be hit by a sudden upsurge in demand from all of those different sources at once. Wiring, plumbing, brass, appliances and devices and everything. And apart from that, in just immediate history, uh, purchases, sales of just things in general, everything, all kinds of products by businesses and regular consumers have been trending back upwards as uh, the effects of the 2020 medical situation are dying down. And especially in uh, rising nations, third world and second world nations, that, you know, couldn't afford, literally couldn't afford to uh, just keep sitting around like first world nations are waiting for the virus to be officially declared over. So many of them had already resumed buying and building stuff, which we've mentioned in past videos has been upticking uh, steel demand pretty quickly. However, that's also brought up copper demand as well, along with, you know, demand for almost everything. And now something that's more medium term also affecting copper demand is uh, the rapid expansion and installation of 5G networks as they're being built separately as their own thing on top of the already existing regular service networks. So that's been creating a new expanding source of copper demand as the reception and service antennas are made of copper, sometimes with a tiny, tiny bit of yttrium mixed in. And because 5G is designed to be a super mega ultimate service network 
with super mega ultimate unlimited data or whatever it's designed to receive process and send a lot more data and a lot more signals a lot more quickly and thus is utilizing way more copper than the previous 3 and 4G networks did so apart from being built separately on top of the already existing networks 5G itself requires way more copper uh, for way more antennas for way more antennas so that has been stacking up copper demand as well and also some stuff that has been expanding or accelerating recently but is also going to continue as a long-term affecting factors the whole green push renewable energy and electric vehicles even just starting with renewable energy wind turbines and solar panels which are the only two anyone seems to actually uh, want to use despite the fact that they're the worst possible options they require the usage of a lot more copper than uh, traditional power plants do regardless of whether nuclear coal-fired gas-fired hydro because instead of one focused in relative terms small generating station in this one area you are spreading that power generation capacity that that one uh, power station would have out across thousands of wind turbines and millions of solar panels so there's that for a start and then now there's the ev surge which is particularly creating an immediate source of demand right now but is going to remain a long-term source as ev manufacturing like regular vehicle manufacturing has recovered from the effects of the whole 2020 situation and ev production has now resumed growing as well as now many new models many new lines of electric vehicles are being produced and this year production and manufacturing of various new vehicle categories of evs has begun larger vehicles that is like electric pickup trucks electric work vehicles delivery vans and they're even trying to uh go down the road of electric construction vehicles now which isn't really going to end well and also the starting of production of electric freight vehicles as in big rigs 18 wheelers freight trucks plus the rapid expansion and installation of all the various uh, charging infrastructure all over the place uh, for these electric vehicles those of which require a lot of copper themselves however the main demand issue being the electric vehicles as even just for regular electric cars just you know your personal vehicles they use a lot more copper than a regular car does regular car usually has between 40 and 50 pounds whereas a electric vehicle has closer to 200 pounds per car usually around 180 pounds of copper or so and the electric pickup trucks and work vehicles have more than that and once you start getting up to uh, electric freight trucks and electric buses and things of that size then you're talking about 800 pounds of copper for each one and then once you start losing your mind and start trying to uh, make electric construction vehicles or heavy equipment vehicles then you're likely dealing with at least half a ton or even close to a ton so all of this has been quickly compounding together and piling on top of each other as well as the fact that copper is in deficit at the moment and is going to remain in deficits uh, for at least 2021 over the course of 2020 a little over half a million tons more copper was consumed than was produced drawing copper inventories down from up between 1.7 and 1.8 million tons in storage down to now about 1.25 or 1.26 and that's total copper storage worldwide not just the uh, the lme exchange so that's a pretty decent drop and industry outlook is that uh, 2021 will have a deficit as well by at least 200,000 tons so at a likely minimum that would probably draw copper down uh, to about 1 million with the likelihood even being there that it might actually get drawn down below that so all of that has come together to now give us uh, four dollar and 30 cent copper potentially might even go up to five bucks soon extremely likely one way or another that this immediate future right now is uh, when we're going to see it break its uh, previous record of just under four dollars and sixty so that's it for this one thank you everybody for sticking around and listening like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already if you want to support me paypal and patreon links are both down there 
But no matter what, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.